Hey Summoners, what's up? My name is Nathan Ning and I'll be your host for this video. We're covering the latest Korean builds for patch 12.21, so make sure you stay tuned if you want to learn about the new status players are using across all five roles. Before we begin, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on content like this, and let's get started. We'll start with the top lane builds and tell you about the one that players are running on Volibear. He's starting to pick up some traction again and he's used as a tanky fighter that acts as a solid frontliner that still deals impressive damage. For his variants take Grasp of the Undying, Demolish, Second Wind, Revitalize, Triumph, Last Stand, Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune of Choice. For items, build Sunfire Aegis, Defensive Boots, Blade of the Rune King, Serex Gauge, Thorn Mail, and Force of Nature. This build grants a solid amount of tankiness without sacrificing any damage. Every item, minus Force of Nature, contributes to his damage output in some way, and he also benefits heavily from the bonus tenacity that Sunfire Aegis provides him. With or without Mercury Treads, he's able to tank some crowd control, shrug it off, and go crazy in teamfights. The next build for the top lane on our list is for Kale. We're beginning to see her picked more and more in the top lane and used as standard build with some defensive runes to help her survive the early game. For runes take Lethal Tempo, Triumph, Legend Alacrity, Cut Down, Bone Plating, Overgrowth, Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune of Choice. Bone Plating makes it much harder for her to get bursted down, making it more feasible to slowly scale up and potentially survive otherwise lethal scenarios. Overgrowth is a solid choice for some extra scaling to late game where Kale shines. Cut Down is another great rune to take as we're beginning to see more tanks in the meta. It adds a great amount of damage that Kale can't take advantage of during teamfights. The items are Nasher's Tooth, Berserker's Grease, Man Immune, Rift Maker, Rabadon's Death Cap, and Zhonya's Hourglass. That covers top lane builds, so put them up on the screen. Take a look, and we'll head into the jungle next. Starting off the jungle, let's talk about Nocturne. It's becoming more popular to see players use Ignite over Flash. He's a pretty strong early duelist that likes to take early fights, and with the addition to Ignite's damage and healing reduction, he's able to win most of them. At level 6, when he casts his ultimate to gank a lane, the summoner spell acts to easily secure kills. For runes sake, Lethal Tempo, Triumph, Legend Alacrity, Last Stand, Sudden Impact, Ultimate Hunter, Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and Health. Ultimate is an important one. I heavily suggest not exchanging it for another one. Nocturne's main threat is its ultimate. It's its gap closer and causes plenty of chaos with its paranoia effect. Lowering its cooldown makes a huge difference, especially in the mid game, as it'll allow you to pick off opponents more often and capitalize on the numbers advantage. For items, build Stridebreaker, Defensive Boots, Man Immune, Death Stance, Mob Mamordius, and Guardian Angel. It's a bruiser build that lets Nocturne deal plenty of damage, but also avoids blowing up the moment that he jumps into a fight. By the way everyone, if you're trying to learn new strategies to help you climb the ranks, make sure you contact the coach over at ProGuides.com. We have an excellent selection of experts who specialize in all roles and champions, so make sure you check them out. Next, in a similar fashion, we have a tanker build that we see Kha'Zix players running as well. With his immense AD scaling, Conqueror as well as Bruiser atomization grants plenty of damage for him to still one-shot the priority targets. For runes, run Conqueror, Triumph, Legend Alacrity, Last Sand, Magical Footwear, Cosmic Insight, Double Adaptive Force, and Health. His items are Gore Drinker, Defensive Boots, Man Immune, Serex Gage, Death Stance, and Spare Visage. Spare Visage is a solid pick later on into the game as you'll heal plenty from Gore Drinker, Kha'Zix's W, and even Conqueror. That's it for the jungle builds, take a look at the screen for a quick recap of those builds. Moving forward, we have mid lane builds to run through, beginning with a jungle and mid lane combo. The combo that we're featuring in this video is Talia and Pantheon. Pantheon's stun sets up Talia perfectly for a CC chain as well as some insane burst damage. Whoever Talia is laning against is in for a bad bad time. They'll have to give up plenty of farmer pressure just because of the pressure a Pantheon gank creates. After Talia finishes her Everfrost, it gets even more difficult to escape from the duo as they're almost certainly going to die within the time that they're locked down. Talia also scales well into the late game, especially with Pantheon supporting her and setting her up in the process. After level 6, both side lanes have to respect the double ultimates that they have, as they apply suffocating amounts of ganking and diving pressure. Honestly, if the enemy team's jungler is on the opposite side of the map, there's essentially no counterplay to dive in one of the side lanes under their turret. Later on into the game, they can easily pick off an enemy that's out of position, regroup with their team, and take objectives together. For Tilia's rune, take First Strike, Magical Footwear, Biscuit Delivery, Cosmic Insight, Mana Flow Band, Scorch, Double Adaptive Force, and a Situational Defensive Rune. For items, builds Everfrost, Sorcerer's Shoes, Archangel Staff, Rapidon's Death Cap, Avoid Staff, and Sonya's Hourglass. For Pantheon's runes, say Conqueror, Triumph, Legend Tenacity, Coup de Gras, Sudden Impact, Treasure Hunter, Double Adaptive Force, and Health. For items, build Eclipse, Defensive Boots, Black Cleaver, Serex Gage, Death Stance, and Force of Nature. We'll move on to the mid lane builds next, but first I want to ask you our question of the day. Do you think crowd control is too strong right now? I personally think the duration of crowd control is reasonable, but the issue lies in abilities that have a low cooldown. Certain champions like Maokai can build some ability haste and get in several casts of their crowd control abilities, making them feel oppressive at times. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and let's keep the video going. Whether or not you're sick of Aatrox, there's more of him to come. He's once again seen some play in the mid lane since he's tankier than most other champions found there. At the same time, his high damage output makes him a threat to assassins and mages alike. There are a few adaptations that you need to make to play him in the mid lane, so let's run through this build. 
Faroon's Take Arcane Comet, Nimbus Cloak, Transcendence, Scorch, Second Wind, Unflinching, Double Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune of Choice. You take Arcane Comet since the side lane is shorter, and you're not guaranteed to get longer fights than you do in the top lane. Slowly poking down enemies to set up a bigger all-in fight later is the move. That's also why you want to run Scorch, to make every short trade a little bit more threatening. For items, build the Eclipse, Defensive Boots, Sorelda's Grudge, Seric Gauge, Force of Nature, and Guardian Angel. This build adds an impressive amount of Burst Amps to Aatrox's already damage heavy combos. Another pick gaining popularity in the mid lane is Quinn. With her high damage and roaming power, she's a solid laner as well as an aggressive playmaker. Even if she doesn't pick up kills in lane, her range and powerful traits allow her to poke down her enemies, push in in lane, and use her ultimates to roam to other lanes. That being said, she's a huge nuisance for her side laners to deal with. For runes, run press the attack, triumph, legend alacrity, coup de grace, sudden impact, relentless hunter, attack speed, adaptive force, and a defensive rune of choice. Here, relentless hunter combined with Quinn's ultimate makes roaming and picking off stray enemies a breeze. For items, build blade of the rune king, berserker's grease, mana mune, kraken slayer, wit's end, and guardian angel. That covers the mid lane build, so let's run through the bottom lane. Starting off with the bot lane build, we're seeing AP hybrid Twitch bullying some poor solo queue players. He's a menace and he can't underestimate his damage, especially since he can stealth, pop out of nowhere, and then blow you up. It's also worth noting that players take exhaust on him. It's a great way to peel for yourself, but it's also great for picking off enemies. You stealth, position yourself for a 1v1, pop exhaust, and basically win since their damage is significantly reduced. For runes, take Hello Blades, Sudden Impact, Eyeball Collection, Ultimate Hunter, Legend Alacrity, Cut Down, Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune. For items, the build is gonna be Blade of the Rune King, Berserker's Greaves, Man Immune, Rift Maker, Nash's Tooth, and Rapidon's Death Cap. This build makes it hard to itemize against Twitch. He's got plenty of attack speed, some attack damage from Blade of Man Immune, and a solid amount of AB with his other items. Rift Maker provides some extra sustain for Twitch as well. Since he's gonna be running exhaust, he can survive a single enemy's burst damage and gradually heal throughout a team fight. Finally, we have a build for Sejuani's support. This build takes advantage of the immense crowd control that she brings and also serves as a way to keep a team's draft ambiguous. Most enemy players will anticipate Sejuani jungle or top lane and might try to counterpick it. For runes, take Aftershock, Fun of Life, Conditioning, Overgrowth, Biscuit Delivery, Cosmic Insight, Ability Haste, Armor, and a Defensive Rune. Fun of Life is great here since Sejuani has so many different ways to apply crowd control. For items, build Relic Shield, Even Shroud, Defensive Boots, Zix Convergence, Zion's Hourglass, and Abyssal Mask. You're going to buff up your team's damage immensely with this build while also accessing a decent amount of ability haste to increase the amount of crowd control that you bring. That wraps up the bottom lane so for the last time in this video, we'll throw up the builds for you guys on the screen. We've concluded our Korean builds for patch 12.21 I hope you guys enjoyed it and like always, share your thoughts with us in the comments below. You can also find a link to join our discord in the description so make sure to check it out if you want to be the first to hear about any news or giveaways. And as usual everybody, take care, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.